Practice 13. 13, last one. Excited about one more day. Um, you know, we will get out there for a couple hours and have a normal one today. And, and uh, Thursday, have our last helmets practice, which really doesn't really count. You know. uh, but that'll be a lot of preparation for, uh, for Saturday. Where Saturday was we'll try to get about 100 reps. The two scrimmages that we've had, we've got about 100 each. So the spring game is about the same thing. We won't, <clears throat> we would do it like we've done in the past. We won't pick teams or any of that goofy stuff some other teams do. Um, just like doing what we've been doing with the scrimmages because that's kind of what they're used to. And I feel like that's the best way to get more work to close out spring. So this is the last one. Uh, you get to week five and Spring practice, everybody's like, Ugh, wanting it to be open, or want it to be over, obviously. And, and uh, but uh, I think we'll get some good work in today, um, and then we'll the spring game on Saturday. What do you find out? What do you like? What don't you like near the end of this? Yeah, it's still way too early to tell, honestly. Um, a lot, a lot of guys are getting reps. Um, you know, there's there's a chance this team could, could have as much talent. Since I've been here. Um, you know, I don't think that exclusively wins football. We still got to develop a lot of continuity on you know each phase of the game, which is gonna once you add ten new guys in May and ten new guys in June and ten new guys in July, guys that potentially can be some contributors. I don't think you're gonna figure out what the overall chemistry of the team is until. Somewhere in the neighborhood of, 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 of September, at some point, you know. So I'm not worried about that now. Just just technique and you know coaching guys. That that's really the only thing that we're focused on. And you know, each time we get out here, we get a little bit better at something. So I expect to get out there today and get a little bit better at something. How's the leadership and get togetherness been? I know that was a big part of last year. It team. was, and that's what I'm talking about when it comes to chemistry. I don't I don't know yet. Um, I don't know yet. You know, we, we we got talent. We got older guys. You know, a lot of our our seniors last year were were fifth year guys. You know, if you look at the seniors this year, there's a lot of transfers. So I think it's going to be, uh, which is which is really my job more than anything, is developing those leaders and developing chemistry in, 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 a, in, a, in the team that, that really likes each other and wants to fight hard for each other. I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be huge in June, you know, in, in, in parts of July and a little bit of August going heading into the season. I don't think we can do that right now. I just don't think this team is, is, is there yet. We've seen the cornerback battle playing out when you got so, uh, so many people vying for positions that were filled by guys who aren't on the roster anymore. Yeah, uh, it, it's similar to what it was last year, really. I mean, if you look, you had Rasul and you had uh, Crawford and you had uh, Maurice Fleming, guys that were transfers, older guys that hadn't played a whole lot of football yet. Uh, you know, where this year you're kind of the same way, your battle, you know, who, who's been making plays. Uh, Hakeem Bailey has really, has really looked good at times. He's got good length and I like where he's at. Mike Davis has shown some flashes of being okay, you know, and we got another senior coming in with the Syracuse kid that's coming in um, here in about another month. So I think it's going to be similar to where we were, older guys that just haven't played a ton for us, but have the ability to be able to play, like where we're at now. Notice a lot of three-year JC guys. What's the thought process of older guys that uh, don't have to develop as much? Yeah, it's, it's becoming a little bit more popular. Uh, we got our eye on a couple more right now as we're currently speaking. I think when 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 Wick gets out on the road next Monday, uh, he, he, he's going to be looking for more because we got some room to be able to fill some of those guys. Um, I just I think it's becoming more popular because guys they they redshirt and then they play um, and then they they get out that they, they, they academically uh, can get out. So it's it, it it seems like it's becoming a little bit more. Popular. I talked to a guy, and I can tell you who it is, but obviously, but a guy we're trying to bring in this weekend that they won't even let him practice this spring at the junior college that he's at because they know he can get out and somebody's going to take him this spring. 
so that junior college coaches are aware of this as well, and they see three-year guys getting 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 picked off their rosters because everybody's needing guys to come in and fill a void. You go through spring, you go, oh, crap, we're a little bit we're a little bit down at receiver, so let's go find one. I got room for a couple, so let's go find them. I, we've talked a lot about this recruiting thing. I used to panic on signing day when we didn't fill our slots. Now I would rather have about four of them left and go through spring and see what we need and then go go out and spring recruit some of these junior colleges or grad transfer guys and fill the spots on what we need for immediate help. It's, it's paid off for us in the, in the past, and I, I look for that trend to continue. Well, I notice that a lot of schools are following suit with you on a four-year deal. I know Oklahoma's done that a little bit, which they hadn't done before. That's another person you got to, or team you got to. Yeah, compare. well, yeah, Oklahoma State's done it more yeah. than Oklahoma has here recently, and I, I saw that they're in on a couple of guys right now. Uh, it, it, it's it's what are your needs? You better you better fill them now, or you're going to get exposed. Um, so it's been good for us, and I would I would look for other teams to continue to do it. I don't think that's going to stop. There was some talk last May and the year before May about that kind of stopping the grad transfer thing stopping. I don't I don't see it stopping. Dana, when you're trying to find a running back coach, um, you would think to maybe look at a running back coach, but Tony had never done it before. But he certainly learned quite a bit from guys like Calvin mm -hmm. Bridge. Um, that interview process. What in particular about his presentation stood out? He said, you know what, this is a good idea. Presence was the number one thing that struck me with him. He's got that voice that carries across the room. You know, he's, he's just got really good presence about him. Uh, recruiting was important. Uh, with our running backs, you got to teach receiver skills. So he's got, you know, uh, J1 wasn't a running back coach prior to getting here either, I don't think, or maybe he was for a year or so. Uh, you know, to me, a, a, a skill guy on offense is a skill guy on offense, whether it's running backs, receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks, all those are in, they're, they're all the same. You know, they're in a lot of the same meetings and run a lot of the same drills. So, <clears throat> I mean, he's brought some, he's brought some, uh, some, some presence to the room. Um, he, he's, he's brought receiving stuff. He's got good ideas when it comes to that. Um, you know, I, I don't think I don't think you need to hire guys that just uh, have a have a have an expertise at one specific position. Gibby was a DB coach his whole career until he started coaching linebackers a few years ago, and and to me that's an easy transition as well. I think offense to defense, front to back end, is another story. But the same side of the ball, kind of either the front end or the back end type thing, skill guideline thing, that, that to me is a little bit bigger, but bigger difference. Boss still, is that sort of an experiment at left guard? Do you feel like he's there cross training? What? He hadn't moved. I don't know. It looks good to me. Mm -hmm. To me, I don't think with him it matters. He's played so much ball, you know, left guard, right guard, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I think, I think once you settle in, you stay on either the left side or the right side mm -hmm. over the long haul. Uh, but short term wise, uh, it doesn't matter. And then just kind of, you know, getting used to either putting your left left hand on the ground or the right hand on the ground, probably important. But for him, he's played so much ball, it doesn't matter. Wick does a good job of moving those guys around and getting them, which is different than how we've done it the last four years, but just getting them to play multiple positions is something that's always been important to them. He says he lost 3% body fat, too, so he's not he, fat to snap. He's not fat to snap. I, he got mad at me for saying that, too. I had to apologize to him. Um, he, he's just, you know, this, the center is, it's a different animal, you know, and hadn't had many that can really just be a dominating guard and just, just dabble in center a little bit and be good at it. That, to me, is kind of tough. We've been so happy with Matt. Uh, that that that's important, you know, and then just repping Rollerson as much as we can at center is going to pay off. And then, you know, Jacob was playing really good at center too, so we felt like we had three and we didn't need him. We got two, and we're going to get Jacob back. He'll be cleared late August, so we'll have him available, you know. So we got we feel like we got we got good centers now, and we're we're, we're kind of set up for the future as well. Let's go.